and welcome, my friends and viewers, to this week's episode of Legend Lore, where I draw and talk about monsters, characters, gods, classes, and other things from a variety of tabletop role-playing games, while giving a small but quickly digestible history about them. Together we'll go over their history within the game, how they're utilized in modern editions, and how you guys can utilize them in your own games. This week, we'll be going back into Merkborg, covering one of the optional classes that players can choose from, that being the Gutterborn Scum. The sneaky rogue stand-in cursed with a terrible birth and sometimes even more terrible hygiene. For starters, the Gutterborn Scum can be found on page 48 of the Merkborg game manual. And getting right into it, the Scum's starting hit points equals 1d6 plus their toughness bonus, and they begin play with an amount of silver equal to 1d6 times 10 and 1d2 omens, which are special one-time use abilities that allow you to influence the outcome of certain situations, such as combat or overcoming obstacles. For reference to these, all omens can be found on page 38 of the Merkborg book. Now, when making a Gutterborn Scum, the first thing that you decide is to roll up your bad birth, which is a quick, brutal origin to explain why your scum is prone to such bad behavior. You roll a 1d6 to decide this. With a 1, someone straight up a basketball shoots you into a moving refuse cart while you're still in your birth. You can look up what a birth call is, I'm not going to explain it to you, it's actually pretty gross. At a 2, you straight up steal Guts's backstory from Berserk dropping from the corpse of your mother who's hanging from a tree outside Galgenbeck. Which incidentally is a place that I hear you could find a pretty cool sword. If you roll a 3, you have a simple but possibly even positive backstory by being raised by rats in the gutters of Grift. Give that rats die at about 1-2 to two years though, you'll definitely have a lot of dead brothers and sisters and let's not even talk about the parents. On a 4, you were the subject of bullying by a couple of beggars from Schleswig, being beaten until you decided that probably wasn't the best place for you to be anymore. Perhaps those Baker Bullies were the first mark that you had on your road to scumbag greatness. On a 5, you managed to escape the Tivlindian Orphanarium, which, incidentally, could be a concept for a pretty cool dungeon for your players to begin in whilst forming their moderate camaraderie, evading abusive workers, stealing their meager wealth, and voyaging off into the night. And finally, at 6, you receive a sterling education by hovel stocking outlaws and aliens, which means you actually might be able to have a few NPCs to call favors from while in game. Whether or not they stab you for asking or backstab you afterwards, only the GM could really say. After deciding your ugly origins, you finally get to have access to your actual class features. For Gutterborn Scum, they are referred to as small, which means that when rolling for strength, they roll a 3d6 minus 2 instead of the traditional 3d6. They also get stealthy, which means that all presence and agility tests for the Gutterborn Scum have their difficulty rating reduced by 2. The default difficulty rating for most roles in the game is 12, so for the Gutterborn Scum, presence and ability tests are instead reduced to a DR of 10. And lastly, the Scum has something very special for getting better. The first time that the Scum gets better, otherwise known as leveling up, see page 33, you get to roll another specialty for your Scum to use, which we'll talk about in a moment. But from the second time that the Scum levels up, it is possible to re-roll these two specialties if you wish to change them out for personal or roleplay reasons. With that, we'll actually go into the different specialties that you can get, choosing one at character creation or being randomly given one by rolling a d6. Out of one, you get Coward's Jab, which simply adds a plus three bonus to your damage when making a surprise attack against an enemy, provided it is made with a light one-handed weapon. Out of number two, you get Filthy Fingersmith, which allows you to both start play with lockpicks and be able to pick locks with just your spindly little fingers with an agility test of a dr8. This is very good for cracking locks, opening doors, and breaking through chests while exploring dungeons. For three, you get Abominable Goblopper, arguably one of the most disgusting skills in the game besides the literal poop sword, which we covered in our previous Morkwork video. With this, you can spit 1d2 times per combat, having to roll a dr8 presence test on hit. Why it's not agility, I can't really say. But on a successful hit, the target is blinded, retching, and vomiting for 1d4 rounds, which I would assume means that they cannot take any further action in combat. Anyone who witnesses these effects must also make a toughness test to avoid also vomiting, with your allies having to beat a dr10 while your enemies have to beat a dr12. It's a very risky play, but is definitely worth it if your friends happen to be hardy enough. For 4, you have Escaping Fate, which is actually really useful in that every time you use an omen, there's a 50% chance that it is not spent. A coin or a d2 would probably be the best way to decide this, but this is probably one of the more mechanically beneficial abilities for the scum. A 5 gets you Excrital Stealth, meaning that you have a profound ability to hide yourself in refuse, debris, and garbage. When hidden in these conditions, to which you should consult your Game Master if you actually are or not, a dr16 presence test is required to notice you. 
And finally, for six, there's Dodging Death. I wish your sterling personality, wayward skills, and general unpleasantness offers you protection from death itself. They really do often refer to death as an actual physical character in this game, don't they? Upon dying in-game, if there is even the slightest possibility that you may have survived, which again, consult your game master as to whether or not this is the case, there is a 50% chance that you actually did. If successful, you awaken back to life after 10 rounds with 1d4 hit points and an unlikely explanation to your escape. This is great for deaths that don't really leave behind a body, such as falling down a mine shaft or being swallowed whole by a giant grave worm, and I'm sure that the scum player will have a lot of fun regaling the party with the tales of their escape. Now with all the mechanical stuff out of the way, last thing that I do want to cover is a couple of character concepts that you guys can use as inspiration for your own individual gutterborn scum. Choosing your location within Morkborg can inform your scum's backstory, be you a knight stalking thief from the cities, a sellsword skulking through battlefields offing enemy soldiers, or a truly villainous killer, all of which are really fitting for Morkborg's grim dark heavy metal setting. Another trick that I would personally recommend is that you can use your scum's specialty to decide your character's backstory and profession. Filthy Fingersmith can be very good for a deformed thief with long, unnaturally thin fingers, while Excretal Stealth can actually inspire a gorilla rebel who uses refuse, swamp mud, and nearby debris as natural cover. The escaping fate and dodging death specialties can also inform a little bit more of a supernatural element to your character. Perhaps one of the great and powerful NPCs of the world is watching over them, intent to see them accomplish some goal while imbuing them with dark powers to turn their fate. Or maybe your scum's powers are, roleplay-wise, gifted to him by the few casters who can command such powers, such as a fellow esoteric hermit or heretical priest PC, or someone the Game Master has set up for a future meeting. I hope these tips help kickstart some ideas for you guys' as characters. And with that, that's the Gutterborn Scum, everybody. I want to thank all of you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and also press the little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Let me know what kind of Gutterborn Scum characters you guys have rolled up, and your overall experiences with the game of Merkborg. And also, let me know what you guys would like to see in upcoming videos. But until then, I'll see you guys next time.